Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. And, you know, we just did our last YouTube video, and we've had some uh, good stuff going on there, pool leaks, and I've got my other video, a couple videos actually on variable speed pumps. And I want to address that because somebody left an interesting comment. I actually got it right here. Let me get this guy up. It was actually from a guy named Ricky Bosifus. Ricky says... Why not just install a properly sized, low-flow, single-speed motor and pump for 16 hours? Nobody uses VSPs in the water infrastructure business unless you have a good reason to manage flow. Why? Because VSPs are less efficient than a properly sized motor slash impeller. Ever heard of pump curves? Well, Ricky, yes, I have. And I'll tell you what, there's some differences between a specifically engineered pump system in a factory and a nuclear power plant um, for a city water system or something like that um, in that everything gets engineered around that this the pump gets engineered that you don't buy an off-the-shelf pump for some kind of big water infrastructure or some sort of factory cooling system or something like that you're not buying an off-the-shelf pump that is all custom done custom built engineered to specific specs Pentair actually makes a 50 horsepower pump and you can't just buy that pump. You need to bring them out. The Pentair engineers have to come out on site and see what the heck's going on so they can design that pump to do exactly what you need it to do. And yes, that is energy efficient for those specific things. But let's remember, we're talking about backyards here. Now imagine in a backyard, someone, a pool builder, builds the identical pool in the same backyards in the same neighborhoods. Well, the houses are gonna be just a little bit different and the equipment location is gonna be different. And so the equipment is gonna go in a different. What in the hell's going on out there? Well, quit it! Anyways, every system is different. I wanna talk a little bit about pump curves and total dynamic head. Now, I have this straw right here, and you can imagine, if I'm sucking on the straw or blowing, as I'm doing that, I can feel some resistance. If you have a straw at home, you can do this. But, you know, if this straw were a little bit shorter, maybe it was a little fatter around, maybe uh, it's one of those twisty straws with curves in it, all those things play into the factor of that resistance that I feel when I blow in and out of that straw. It's the same thing with a pool pump on a typical plumbing system. Um, and this is where the benefits of a variable speed pump come in because we can now say, okay, well, I can get a three quarter horse pump, I can get a half horse pump, I can get a one horse pump, and they all have that impeller, and they have a pump curve, okay? And what a pump curve is, is essentially a performance chart that outlines the performance of the pump based on the load or total dynamic head, the resistance it has to push against, and that will dictate the amount of gallons per minute that pump can push. The more total dynamic head, the less gallons per minute the pump can push. Now, it takes a certain amount of electricity to move a given amount of water, and that changes rapidly depending on how many gallons per minute you're trying to move against a certain amount of total dynamic head. And there is a sweet spot where the pump moves the most, sorry, that picture doesn't belong there, where the pump moves the most amount of water for the least amount of watts. However, you're walking a fine line with a single speed pump. Essentially, if you're off of that line, you're losing efficiency. And this is where the variable speed pumps come in and really take over when it comes to energy efficiency and excel above and beyond the old style single speed pumps. Most high-end variable speed pumps today not only give you a reading of RPM, but will also give you a reading of gallons per minute as well as watts. So you can adjust things around to figure out where you're moving the most amount of gallons per minute for the least amount of watts. This, in addition to cutting your gallons per minute in half, will decrease your power consumption by eightfold. And if you just run the pump twice as long, you've now moved the same amount of water in twice the time but saved 75% of your electricity alone. If it sounds a little overly complex, don't worry. I'm going to sum it up and boil it down for you. Every single residential swimming pool is different. And it's different from day to day. The loads are different. 
the seasons are different, the swim cycles are different, the weather is different, and all these things come into play. With a variable speed pump, you've got lots of extra power when you need it, and you can tone it down, run real slow when you need it. And that boils down to big savings in your pocket, not only with electrical consumption, but also with the life of your pump and wear and tear, and also how much you're using as far as chemicals go, because your pump is running longer using a fraction of the electricity. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time. That is really, we need to, we need to decrease the number in here significantly because it's nightmare material.